Thank you. Right, going live in about five seconds, boys. My dogs might start barking, so I'll just mute if they do, and then yeah. come back in. No worries. I don't want anyone getting with the earache. <laughs> it's saying we're live on my screen, but I'm watching it on YouTube now, and it's saying it will begin in a few moments. I might, just re might just need to refresh. It says live 49 seconds on man. All right. Yeah, it says like 50 for me. Yeah, one minute. Pretty yep. Much. Looks like it's up on my YouTube. Oh, good. Right, let's get started then. Hello and welcome to Inside Grassroots Stream Sports live stream podcast. It's our first ever live stream, so bear with us. Um, we're using Leon Stewart and Connor Wynn, Hollis promising youngsters. Um, don't forget, we're live today. So if you have any questions, drop us a comment in the comment section, and uh, we'll get started. So, say hello to the lads. Evening, gents. How are you getting on? Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Yeah. So, let's introduce who we have on the podcast. We have Nathan Taylor. Who's we've been with us for a couple of years at Jerome Sport? We've got Briggsy, who's our rugby correspondent. We've got Leon Stewart in your bottom left, who's in Hull of Seas under 19. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And we have Connor Wynn, who's been part of the first team for just over a year. So, how's lockdown treating you guys? Not bad, to be fair. I mean, you can't really do out of that from staying, so just grinding through training. So, yeah. Getting used to staring at computer screens, having meetings, that kind of jazz. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Connor, we're actually going to start with you, if that's all right. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. One second. <clears throat> Just getting used to the whole tech side of things on the podcast. So, Connor Wynn, um, obviously, he started off at Skirla, then later, City Hall Academy, and then you got signed up by Hull of Sea. Um, I want to start by paying particular focus to your debut. Okay, um, Obviously, we've had some guys coming through the academy systems in Hull and make their first team debuts. Mikey Lewis, a uh, teammate of yours at City of Hull, he made his debut for Hull, Hull KR. And I would say he went okay. He had really good flashes. He's obviously a really talented player. But I think later on in his career at, F at KR, did he really show what he can do. Um, then you have Bailey Hodgson, who came through uh, Castleford Academy obviously started off at West Hull, um, really highly rated player. When he had his debut, uh, same position as you, he plays fullback. I feel like he played it safe a little bit, but he had a slight injury, uh, which sort of explains why we didn't see the best Bailey Hodgson that everyone was looking forward to seeing. Uh, so my first question to you is, you know, what made you think, what what, what do you think uh, was the, the reason behind having such a dream debut? Obviously scoring a try, against Hull KR, massive derby day, uh, sell-out crowd at the KCOM Stadium. Um, why was it such a smooth sailing, uh, perfect uh, debut? Uh, pretty much, you, you just I got told during, like, uh, early in the week that I was obviously going to play against KI in the derby. And uh, obviously, you've just got to take it as it comes, to be honest. You've just got to, like, play an actual game. Don't have to worry about anything. But uh, I think... I think it was just all the other players as well, like what helped you a lot along the way. So you can do all your, all your own stuff, but as long as you've got the players to back you, uh, then then you'll be all right. But I think uh, 
I obviously made a few hours at the start, but then you just work your way into the game and stuff, and obviously getting that try at the end uh, is probably the <laughs> best feeling and best game I've like played in so far. Yeah. Hey, so obviously this is a grassroots grassroots platform, so a lot of young lads follow us. Uh, for the young lads who are watching who want to make their debut for FCKR or whichever Super League team they follow, uh, what was it like walking down the tunnel, walking out in front of such a big crowd uh, for the first time for FC? Let's talk us through sort of how it felt to make your debut. Uh, it was probably the most nerve wracking thing I've ever had in my life, to be honest. Uh, just walking like even before the game, you just like, oh yeah. Am I am I gonna play well or am I gonna play awful or something like that? But yeah, I think walking out it's just nerve wracking. But once you get that first touch of the ball, you just want to want to carry on. So yeah, um, looking at these scenes of your of your debut um, that you made, obviously we've got some of the, the images just flash on the screen in a second. Um, you seem to have a really really good time. Did you do you sort of just play like? The uh, the derby, the debut on repeat at home. Do you have like posters on the wall, uh, clips of repeat sort of thing of you scoring a try, or is it something you've put to bed now? You're sort of focused on the rest of your career. Uh, probably at first I was, to be honest. I was probably looking at looking at the game a lot back, but now I'm just focusing, obviously, uh, start trying to do it again, like playing bigger games and uh, try improve a lot from that game because obviously you can take a lot from it from obviously the errors I made, but. Um, yeah, just I'm. I'm obviously it's always in the back of my mind and stuff. Obviously, it's like my first derby I've played in, but uh, I'm, I'm hopefully get a more chance in another derby to obviously play better than I actually did in that game. Ace, um, Connor, you got a question for? Um, sorry, Nathan, you got a question for Connor? Uh, yeah. So obviously, speaking about you, um, you having the rest of the first team to sort of be there and be there for you, like making it easier for you to fit into that game. How was it easy, like fitting into the first team, like with the weeks leading up to that game? Obviously, before you knew you were playing, but how did you find that whole process of going from academy to like first team with all the professionals that you've been watching for years? Uh, obviously, first pre season, uh, I probably didn't do too bad, so I was all right, all right, settling in for it. Obviously, I had uh, Shirley, Jamie Shaw, who, like, uh, he was massive, he was massive for me, obviously. Uh, going into leading into games because he was out. I only got my shot because he was uh, out with concussion. But I think the first few weeks you're obviously settling, settling in, getting out to know all the moves. So it was a bit hard than first bits, and obviously uh, played a few uh, friendlies. But I wasn't really expecting it. But then it obviously came along, and uh, it's just yeah. But I think obviously with them around me and uh, settling to the training sessions, I think it was all right to be honest. Yeah. Hey, Sarah, are you going to come in for a question with Connor? Yeah, so if you don't mind, but gentlemen, I'm just going to advance a bit towards the 2020 season. So, as we know, we've been locked down for the past year, so the ins and outs of it. But, um, Connor, I'm just going to ask you, so when the um, rugby season was halted between the spring lockdown, what types of training did you get up to? in your own individual time. Did they set you like any specific training or was it up to you? Uh yeah, obviously our our conditioner at uh he obviously he sent us sessions like pretty much every day to fill but uh I, I, I kind of just like I didn't I didn't do much training to be honest in the lockdown to be honest. But yeah, he Atto he was uh, sending sessions like pretty much every day. So I was uh, just having to do them like pretty much arm sessions, running we had a prob- we had a program to be honest. Obviously, uh, obviously we had a we had a few a few weeks off before we got the program. But uh, yeah, we got the program. But we just uh, everyone tried to stick to it as much as they can, and if you could or you couldn't, so uh, yeah. Ace, right, Leon. I'm going to bring you now into into the podcast. Um, so, Leon Stewart, obviously, you started playing rugby in year eight, which is quite late for most rugby players. I'm sure Connor started playing rugby. Um, in primary school age. Um, so from playing rugby at Sirius Academy School, uh, there's you in the top right there, your, your classmates, your teammates. You then got picked up by City of Hull Academy. And you went from being somebody who never played rugby before to being um, one of the best rugby players in this city and eventually uh, becoming one of the best rugby players uh, for your country, making your England debut um, in the summer of 2019. Um, a lot of play, a lot of people in rugby, in rugby circles ask me questions about Leon Stewart, and whenever 
I'm given the opportunity to just describe him. I always say he's like a young uh, John Bateman, uh, really tough, he's strong, uh, he scores tries for fun. He's a bit of an all-rounder, really skillful player, just like John Bateman was when he was really young. Um, so a question for you, Leon, to start off with. Obviously, John Bateman, he went over to the NRL. Uh, your teammate from West Hull, Bailey Hodgson, he's also gone over to the NRL. And growing up, uh, did you ever think that you would be a professional rugby player? And if yes, do you think you have the potential to follow in John Bateman's footsteps and follow in Bailey's footsteps and maybe go across to NRL later on in life? Uh, for for the uh, first bit of the question, I would have to tell you no. I, I didn't even, I, as you say, I didn't start playing until I was in year eight at, at uh, school. Um, but once once I got into Westall, uh, just it flew by then, and I was just totally in love with the sport. Uh, what about in terms of obviously it's yeah, been Bailey is going over to. Uh, Sorry. I was going to say, obviously, Bailey has gone over to the NRL, and you know your playing style is 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 very good in terms of you know you scored a hat trick in your debut yeah. for England. Um, a lot of scouts will be watching that game. Uh, so, in terms of progressing further, have you got your sights to sit on having a good career in the Super League, or do you think you're going to make a move over to Australia like Bailey? <laughs> Not sure if Leon can hear us. <laughs> Do you get that question, Leon? Right, we seem to be having connection issues with Leon. You're mute. He, he, Leon's muted himself somehow. There we are. You somehow managed to mute yourself, Leon. <laughs> now he's gone all together. <laughs> Uh, we'll give Leon a couple of seconds just to to sign back in. As we'll wait for Leon to come back, we're going to read some of these uh, comments. Uh, so Michael, uh, first of all, uh, his first comment is, hello, lads. And he's also said that the whole derby has made him fall in love with uh, Rugby League. Um, so, Connor, that whole derby made us all fall in love. I hope to see just that extra bit more uh, seeing your performance. Um, hopefully, we've got Leon Stewart back. You back, Leon? Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I'm here. Yeah, I can hear you now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, in terms well, of... I was, um, I was just saying, yeah, uh, I didn't hear the last bit of the question. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so, uh, the last bit of the question was, um, in terms of you know going forward in your career... Is the NRL something that you're sort of setting your sights on or he's focused on having a good career here at Holosea? Yeah, I am. Um, obviously, I want to I want to play for FC as, as as much as I can because it's my it's my own club. Um, and I, I've always wanted to do that ever since I started playing. Uh, but it's always been a, a dream of mine to go to go across to the NRL. Uh Obviously, just like Bailey did, um, so I hope I hope to go one day. Yeah. Nice, uh, Nathan. You got a question for Leon? Uh, yeah. So obviously, you're right at what could be considered the very start of like your professional career. You know, you're in the academy at FC. Uh, you've been talking about your dreams there, playing for FC as much as you can, and you know, hopefully going to Australia. So, like, looking more in the short term, where do you aim to be? Like in regards to your career within the next, like, one or two seasons? Like, do you have any goals in your mind or are you just sort of taking it as it comes? Uh, yeah, I mean, as long as I'm doing everything I can to to get the first team spot that I want, uh, I, don't, I don't see why why I can't just take it as it comes, you know, just being in, in like, my peak physical form and just getting on with it, just training. Hey, it's Harry's looking in for Leon, mate. Yeah, so Leon, so you've been involved in the City of Old Academy and you've been working under Danny Wilson. So have you seen game, your game and abilities improve along with any fresh expectations that Danny may have given you? Bit of lag on uh, Leon's head. Sorry. 
We'll try that again, yeah, Harry. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been involved with the City Wall Academy, right? So you've been working under Danny Wilson. Have you seen the game and abilities improve along with any pressure and expectations that he may have demanded from you? It looks like um, we're having connection issues with Leon, so we're going to move on and come back to that question, Harry. That's all right. Uh, we've got two Leon Stewarts here on the screen. <laughs> um, I, I, I'll, I'll basically just summarise that question. So in terms of your time at City of Hull, Leon, um, coaching-wise with Danny Wilson, what would you say has been the, most, the biggest piece of advice you, you sort of received from Danny while she was down at the academy? Um, to be honest, all the, all the advice I get from from Danny is absolutely worth taking on taking head off. Um, I mean, he's, he's a great coach. As I've had him at England as well, uh, but probably to just absolutely dig deep and you know try your absolute best to do everything you can to become a better player. Ace. Right, so we're going to move on to uh, this next section of the podcast, which we're going to call um, Instagram Moments. So, obviously, DRM Sport, the main purpose of our platform is to not only showcase uh, the skills of rugby league at grassroots level, but we also want to showcase your personalities um, off the pitch as well. Um, so, we've picked two pictures each from your Instagrams. And basically, this is what you guys have described to our viewers what the story is behind each image. So I'm going to start with you, uh, Connor. Can you see that picture? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so what's the story behind this picture? Um, uh, obviously, my third, my third game, what I played. Uh, and obviously, uh, I scooted from Hooker and uh, scored my second try of, obviously, uh, my career. So, yeah, so that was probably, yeah, second try. So it was probably... Uh, Great, great moment. So that's what yeah. it. Yeah, you can see you can see the passion there on your face. Is chucking the ball in the air, absolutely loving life. Um, Leon, next picture is for you. I hope you can see that image. I know you're having a, some uh, connection issues. But let's describe to us the sort of story behind this particular image. He's not here, is he? Is he not? No. Ah, uh, how that? Well, we'll go back to Connor again then. Um, Connor, your second image. Um, so, what's the story behind this picture? Uh, that was last uh, hill session before before Christmas. Uh, that that hill is a killer. That is the worst hill. I, yeah. I, I wouldn't encourage anyone to go there. Yeah, I've walked my dog on that hill uh, a couple of times, uh, just on the outskirts of Hollow, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah, from so that group of FC lads, who would you say is the fittest? Who, who's absolutely smashing the hills on pre-season? Uh, Swifty, uh, Adam Swift is always leading by example. It's just, you, you, he just, he's up and down by the time you're even at the top of yours. So yeah. <laughs> he's always uh, leading by example, Swifty. So he's always killing the, uh, the, the especially them hills as well. What, uh, what, uh, probably the hardest things you'll come across. Yeah, yeah, they look, they look absolutely epic, mate. Um, Leon, I hope you can see us and hear us. We're going to try one last time, mate, else we're going to have to, to move on. So, Leon, it's going back to your first image. Hopefully, you can see that. Um, just describe to us the, what's going on in this picture. I can't see it yet. No, it looks... All right. I think you've got a bit of a internet lag, haven't you? Yeah, it's just been... Yeah, yeah. Um, I can see it. Uh... Yeah. Oh, there. Yeah, it's when... It's the uh, first game... He's gone again. Oh, my oh. gosh. No worries. Like I said, guys, this is our first ever live stream. So, of course, there's going to be some kinks that we need to iron out. And first of all, we're going to need, we need to test everyone's internet connection before we have them on. Um, Connor Wynn's got the best internet in whole, apparently. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's got he's got a Wi-Fi hotspot. So, if you know where Connor Wynn lives, just sit on his front doorstep and get yourself on the Wi-Fi. Um, next podcast, we're going to have to send Leon round to your house to get him on. Yeah, uh, sure. He's struggling big time. I'm just going to talk um, about Leon's last image for him uh, because it's obviously a very, very important image. Um, 
that we can all sort of chip in and discuss. Um, so this is a game that I filmed on GRM Sport between Hull and Castleford. You've got um, some City of Hull boys there. You've got Leon and Joel Speed, and you've got some uh, some Cast lads, uh, Bailey Hodgson, Kane Rob, etc. Um, this goes to show that even though you know we're a couple of miles away from Castleford, we're not we're not really a hot spot for Castleford to do scouting. Um, the scouts are quite attracted to coming to our, our amateur teams like West Cole, like Skirla, to poach some of our players. Um, just a question for you, Conor Wynn. Um, why do you think um, we do so well at producing good players in the city? Why do you think scouts are so attracted to coming across the hole um, to sort of sort of try to poach players from West Hall, from your Skirlers, from your Mighty Warriors, when you have when you have clubs like Cast Panthers and Lock Lane? Why do you think Castleford are so intrigued by our players? Uh, it's, probably, it's probably just different, isn't it? Um, obviously, it might be it might be interesting because we've obviously got good amateur set up. We've got uh, some really good amateur teams. Uh, so, yeah. I think, uh, obviously, Scaler myself is probably one of the best. Uh, Westall. Obviously, I played for Eastall as well when I was younger. So, they were yep. massive as well. But I think it's just massive. The, the amateur teams are just massive around Hull. So, I think it's obviously... Maybe more interested in ours than uh, many others, but I think uh, I think it's it, they've got to be interested with how good the actual amateur set setup is uh, around Hull. Yeah, obviously I film a lot of grassroots games, and um, over the years, the games that I film which have gained the most attention are the games which involve Hull teams and Siddle. Um, however, when you were sort of growing up, what were the biggest team in the area? Everyone was sort of not not afraid to play. But the team that everyone respected because they knew they had a lot of skill. Uh, I I wouldn't say like respected. I think more like uh, feared. I think it was Siddle Our uh, They had a lot like they had like Morgan Smithies, uh, Riley Dean, Tom O'Rourke, all like playing Super League now. Mm. So like that that was probably the best team. Like they went year above and won like the year above National Cup as well. So that was like probably the most feared team. Not feared, but I mean, like more, more, more team to be like be bothered about and try to beat more. But I think uh, there was there was two there was two two unstoppable. So uh, yeah, you mentioned you mentioned uh, two Super League players there. Tom Allroyd is at Leeds and Morgan Smithies. I think you hit the nail on the head there. I think uh, Siddle are just like a talent factory, aren't they? They produce constantly players who end up going on to the first team. They're they're uh, they're respected Super League clubs. Um, so I think Siddle over the years have always been that one team where uh, people know you've got you know professional grade talent within the under 15s, under 14 ranks coming through. Um, just going to bring. Um, Harry in for a, con- for a question for Connor if you've got another one Harry yeah, only two seconds. so Connor we're yes. going to go to the 2020 season again we're going to talk about the restart so when obviously Lee Radford was sat under under last looking as the interim coach how did you cope with um, like playing in the few wins and the losses that you may have participated in but what did you learn as much as losses, what did you learn about the games you won in your own individual individual performance? Uh, can you repeat that, sorry, Matt? <clears throat> yeah, so obviously when the restart kicked in after the long break for Super League, um, Andy last took over as the interim coach, but what did you learn about the games that you played in, the wins and the losses, but how did you, how did you find your own performances in the wins? Is there anything that you can progress on, or do you think it would be all story? Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot. Obviously, I'm only 20, so I think there's, there's uh, I think there's always going to be learning and stuff like that. So there's never going to be the full package, even even like uh, when you're like 30 and you're still playing and stuff. There's always there's always that time you're going to be learning. But I think massively taking from the game, I think he's obviously taking. Uh, improving my fitness and trying to get uh, my weight down a bit, so I think that's probably the biggest, uh, biggest thing that I've taken from the games what I've played in, uh, what I played in for, in the twenty twenty season, and um, also like obviously the uh, decision making and stuff out the back of players and stuff like that. So I think they're they're the, probably the main two what I've taken from yeah. the games what I played in last year. Yeah, just based you, you mentioned obviously the um, the weight 
the weight gain and stuff like that. So is there still like a massive emphasis, Connor, on gaining weight at Super League? Do they still weigh you guys and sort of say you need to be this particular size or is it not that important uh, when you're at Super League? Uh, if 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 it's affecting the team, then uh, then they'd probably say something. We, obviously, we have to weigh in every day, so all the uh, S&C staff can take note of it and obviously speak to you about it. So say if you play a Super League game and... You wouldn't, yeah, you're not fit enough to obviously speak to you and help you a lot and work with you. But uh, yep. they don't take it too much into detail, but as long as you're uh, doing your best for the team, then that's all you can really do, can't you? So, and it's, uh, it's, your, it's your body, so it's uh, it's just pretty much, yeah, they do take it in note and we have, we have to weigh in every morning, but I think if it's only affecting the team, then it, that's probably when it's uh, your biggest issue. Yeah, right. Because basically, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of younger lads who who follow us, and some of the lads may think they're too small, or or maybe um, you know not weigh enough, or, or, or come across as though they're weaker than their peers. Um, is there a place in? Would you say there's still a place in today's game? Like, look at your Rob Burrows, your smaller players. You can come in and play Super League. You're not the tallest lad, but you're obviously really strong, and you're quite a stocky fullback. Um, would you say in today's game, there's still a place for your smaller players? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. There's loads of people who are small. Look at Danny out, and he's not the biggest, and he's still probably he's most of the top tackle of a Super League most seasons. Yeah. Uh, look at, and he's not, and he's not big at all. It's don't don't matter about size. It don't. Uh, you, as long as you've got the uh, the right attitude and uh, and you've got some strength about you, then I think you, you you've got it. But uh, people need to stop uh, worrying about the how big they are. Yep. Matter about um, uh, Nathan, you want to come in with a question for Connor, mate? Yeah. Uh, so you was mentioning like about the restart. There's always stuff you can take to improve yourself. Like you mentioned your fitness and your decision making and stuff. Um, so I asked a similar question to Leon earlier. Is there any goals you've already got set in your mind for like the upcoming season, the season after that? Any long term ones that you've got, or are you again just taking it as it comes, like this pre season? Like, what, what's uh, have you got anything specific you want to do or? Um, like I spoke about the weight, I'm obviously I want to try to lose uh, two more kilograms uh, before the start of the season, which we've got about four more weeks, maybe just five at the push. Uh, but the main key is obviously just playing as much as I can. I'm obviously I'm out of contract this year, so obviously it's trying to win that new deal or or elsewhere. So, but uh, yeah, I'm just focusing on myself at the minute, focusing on having a good year, just mainly focusing on. Uh, like the weight, and obviously, I think I'm feeling a lot fitter this year, so that's probably the main focus. Yes, it's going to go to uh, some of the comments. So, Michael Cruz has asked if I'm going to be uploading any amateur games in the future. Uh, Challenge Shop games will be made available in our league, uh, which is great to watch. Um, so, well, this ba- is this based on what we've got in terms of the content we've already stored? Every game I've ever filmed is already on YouTube and available. There's no games that I've filmed that are sort of kept away from you guys. So, all the games that I've filmed at amateur level are available on the Jiro Sport YouTube channel. Um, in terms of linking up with our league, uh, something we may explore. I'm actually thinking about starting some kind of live stream of, of games as well. Uh, but in terms of whether I'm going to upload any future games, uh, hopefully this pandemic is at its back end now. We can get back to to rugby games. But I haven't got any sort of past games which are on a hard drive anywhere. Every game I've filmed is available on YouTube. And there's another question here which can be for uh, both of you. And it's from Paul Rudd. Um one second. It says, what would you say is the best way for young players to develop? Um, if we try and bring Leon in for this question, see what his connection is like, what would you say, Leon, is the best way? Because uh, obviously, you started playing rugby in year eight. You went on to City of Hull, Hull of Sea, England in such a short space of time, which is a massive progression. Um, what would you say works best for you as a young player to help you develop so rapidly? Uh, probably to, you know, like I said earlier about like advice from your cook. Oh dear, <laughs> he's having an okay. absolute howler today. Um, right, Connor, if you don't mind asking that question, mate, you're you're young as well. Do you say you're twenty years old? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty years old. It's made his debut. At, was it eighteen or nineteen when he made a debut? Eighteen. 18, made a debut in front of like twenty five thousand people at KCOM Stadium. Scored a try in the debut. Um, 
obviously you must have de- developed really quickly as well. What would you say uh, worked best for you in terms of that rapid development? I'd say obviously just speak, obviously taking the advice on board, what your coaches gear, whether they say you need to learn on your catching or your passing, uh, just do it, just get on, get on with it, obviously get your extras done. But I think the main focus is, in, is like believing in yourself, obviously believing that you can do it, Obviously, I I got told like a few times before that like I couldn't do anything, but uh, you just got to believe in yourself. Obviously, just listen, like say if your parents take you, any of your family members, just listen to what they've got to say. Don't like don't like think oh yeah I'm a big guy I'm just actually take the advice on board, mm. and actually do what uh, people are telling you to do. So I yes. think that's the best advice uh, what what you could give to be honest for a young player to develop. Yeah, over the years, I've interviewed so many pro players and they always say, what advice would you give kids? And the number one advice they always say is, listen, listen to the advice, listen to your coaches and take the take the feedback on board and don't look at it in a negative way. I know a lot of players who, who think they're world, world class when they're under 12, under 13. And so when they get a bit of negative feedback, they go absolutely mental and they want to move teams and stuff like that. I get, I get so many messages from, from kids saying, ah, do you know if so-and-so is taking on players, I want to leave my team because my coach is having a go at me sort of thing. It's because some kids just aren't really prepared to take on negative feedback. But, you know, the best players use that negative feedback to make them, make them even better. Just going to give um, our listeners a deeper insight into what it's like to be a professional player. Obviously, it's a grassroots platform. Most of our, our viewers are sort of between 11 years old and 18 years old. So they're, they're, they're wanting to be professionals just like you, Connor. Um, and I live in Willoughby. So I drive past the County Road training grounds like on, on, a daily, on a daily basis. I'm always to Starbucks to get a coffee, which Nathan knows about. Um, but what is the day-to-day life like as a rugby player? Because whenever I drive past County Road, it's empty. There's no cars in the car park. You guys must train like eight till nine, an hour each day. And then <laughs> off you go, you're at home. Um, so yeah, what's it like day-to-day um, being a pro, a pro rugby player, uh, I'll just do you like a like one day of like a schedule. Yeah, so they're like uh, you wake up about six half six, um, and you have your breakfast. Got uh, do you have to train in? Um, you come in, wear yourself, uh, roll and stretch and stuff like that. But um, it's just like as a as a rugby player, you've got to sacrifice your personal. Well, not not fully sacrifice it, but sacrifice your personal life outside of rugby. Say, like, if you've got training on a Saturday and your mates are having a drink on a Friday. No, yeah. obviously, it's a pandemic, but, I mean, like, in the future, you've got to sacrifice yeah. that to just actually, if you want to be a rugby player, then you've got to focus on your, actually um, your training and just put, putting all that past you. If you make it as a rugby player, you've got that time past your career to enjoy your life. If you want to actually become a rugby player, you've got to do it. Obviously, you can't you can't be going out drinking on a Friday and then rocking up to training on a Saturday, or like staying out late all night. Uh, you've just yeah. got to get a certain amount of hours sleep, or you just uh, crabby all day and obviously not training your best. But I think obviously in pre season, that's obviously the longest days. So we've been finishing maybe at like four o'clock. Yeah, some most days. Um, I think obviously you get you get the odd you get like an hour's break in between and stuff like that, but it's really long days. It's just like you've just got to sacrifice stuff to obviously get to that level. Obviously, you're only twenty years old. Do you feel like you've sort of sacrificed your your teenage, your late teen, your early twenty years? Do you feel like you've made a massive sacrifice, or has it been like something that you feel like has been worth it in terms of your your just just in, for the benefit of your career as a player? Uh, yeah, obviously, like I've got a set of mates, and obviously they're, they're like going on lads' holidays, yeah, drinking every weekend and stuff like that, spending time with each other constantly. But you can't, you can't do that if you want to. Obviously, your mates understand, but if they don't understand, then you're obviously not your mates. But um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think you have got to sacrifice that bit. Like, I, I, like I've just said, I couldn't rock up to training on a on a Saturday, like. Um, when I've when I've been drinking on a Friday, and like holiday times, like my mates go on holiday during uh, like season July. time. Yeah, do, do, so I've got to work all the way to like September and stuff like that, and then they work yeah. because they're back at work and they only get a certain amount of holidays. But yeah. I think 
just what you've got to do if you want to get to that level of being like at the top. Obviously, I'm not saying I'm at the top myself because I've got a long, long way to go. But I mean, like the yeah. types of, like Josh Griffin, Jamie Shaw, Carlos Tulvada, and stuff like that. Yeah. You've got they've they've obviously sacrificed their life to get to that top. Yeah, that explains why everyone's off to Tenerife in September. It's the only time you guys can get away, isn't it? Yeah. I thought it was some kind of like discount deal that UFC boys have because it seems like every September everyone's off to Tenerife. Yeah. Um, Harry, do you want to come in with a question, mate? So, Connor, you like to class yourself as a full-back, yeah? Yeah. Right, so obviously you've just mentioned there about Jamie Shaw, obviously a full-back at the club for several years now. But we've had Fred, Fred Hodgson take over as a new full FC manager. Obviously, he's well-known in Super League, you know, we've been like, playing, and he's a full-back in your position. So what can you learn from him, not just as a coach, but as a person who's played in your position? What advice and what can you pick up off him? Uh, as everyone knows, if you've watched him, he's, he was probably the smartest player on the field. He just constantly knew like uh, what, what was going on and stuff like that. So I think obviously learning that smartness off him, obviously learning like your types of numbers, your positioning and stuff like that, which is he's focusing on a lot with us, like me and Jake. Obviously, Jake would just move into that to get in that one shirt and move into full back. Yeah. Mainly focusing on the obviously the positioning and uh, the numbers side of it, but I think, like I've just said, is it was it was probably one the smartest on the pitch when he was on the field. So I think uh, just learning that smartness off off him and just understanding my role. Obviously, he went on to win challenge cups and stuff like that. But um, I'm on the twenty, so I've got plenty of years ahead. So yeah, um, it's just obviously biding my time with him and just learning as much as I can off him, like. Like the smartness side of things. He played in grand finals as well, didn't he? 2012 yeah. against Leeds. Um, did he also play in the 2013 one against Wigan? You what, sorry, mate? Did he also play in the 2013 grand final against um, Wigan? <laughs> I'm not, I don't have a clue about that. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's going back, going back years, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but he's got plenty of grand final experience and Challenge Cup wins, so there's a lot to learn off that, isn't there? Yeah, yeah just, definitely. Just to jump on the back of um, Briggs's question about about the experience, obviously, uh, with Jake Connor going in at fullback. Um, as a talented young player, um, do you feel like sometimes you're too far down the pecking order, or is it a good thing to be down the pecking order and learn from these experienced players? Is it frustrating to be training your hardest every week, um, or or was it a case of you enjoying this the learning experience of it? Uh, every, everyone, every, Jake will have been in my situation where he's constantly learning every week. Surely will. Uh, you've just got to be. You've just got to bide your time and obviously just keep working hard so you get that chance and hopefully take the chance with both hands when you get it and obviously try to keep your spot in the team. With obviously Jake and Shirley, they've had England experience, so it's going to be uh, hard for me to get in the team. But yeah. I've just got to do what I've got to do to obviously try his, uh like obviously. They're my, mate, they're my teammates and stuff like that. But when it comes to positions, obviously you want that spot, don't you? So like, I'll hopefully if I if I uh, stay old, then I'll be in for that number one shirt. So, ace uh, Nathan, do you want to come up with a question for Conor? Uh, yeah. Um, so if you had to look back over like the last couple of years of you being at um, FC, you know, like mainly around the first team. If if you had to pick like one memory or like experience, whether it be whether it be on or off field to be like your best, your most standout one when you think he time at FC so far, what would what would that be? I I'd, I'd say it's got to be the derby. It's probably the best day of my life so far. So it's like most enjoyable, like that feeling when you, especially when we've got uh we've got the record record win as well in the derby. So. Like and obviously I played in it, so it's that's probably got to be the best moment so far. And obviously the years I've been at Hull. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, honestly, Derby is like I mentioned earlier that Mikey Lewis made his debut. Everyone was looking forward to that. Uh, Bailey Hodgson made his debut, and honestly, probably every scout in England was looking forward to his debut. Um, but your debut, probably from an academy player that I know coming through the system, probably the best debut I've seen. Uh, walking out on, on a Derby day, I says absolutely insane. Um, Leon, it looks like you're on a different device, mate. So hopefully you can hear us and see us. Uh, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Ah, oh, fantastic. Um, it's going to go back to what we tried to do earlier, which was um, Instagram moments, Leon. Uh, I want to get some, some a reaction of you just describing uh, what's going on 
in this particular image. Can you see it on the screen? Not yet. Not yet. Give it a minute. Everyone at home can see it, I'm assuming. <laughs> Yeah, it's still not come up. <laughs> right. So it's an image I took off your Instagram, and it's you sort of arm in arm with um, some cast players after the game that I filmed when you yeah, was at yeah, City yeah. of Hull. You've got Bailey Hodgson, uh, Joel Speed, etc. Um, one second, mate. Um, why do you think uh, Cass was so interested in your particular age group at West Hull? Oh, he's gone. Didn't even get to finish my question. <laughs> I might have to get Leon on a different show because it seems like his internet connection is having an absolute howler. Um, so I'm going to move on kind of, uh, back to you, mate. And I was doing a bit of digging and talking to uh, people I know in the community, people I know from FC, from a coaching uh, perspective. And it hasn't always been a straight road for you, which I, I was surprised by. I thought you just sort of went from Skirlar to City of Hull to FC. Because obviously the first time I filmed you, you was at Skirlar. Then next to her, you're at City of Hull sort of thing. Um, but when you was on scholarship, apparently um, you always had a lot of talent. This is according to the, the FC coach I spoke to. But you didn't always have the best commitment. And you wasn't offered an academy uh, deal straight away. However, you was put on a team against the Aussies, Mackie, uh, Mackie State, who come across every other year. And he absolutely ripped them to shreds, apparently, which led to you... Um, sort of getting the academy uh, academy deal. Um, did you always think that you had an opportunity to play rugby professionally? Is that why you didn't take it seriously? Did you, did you not really think that you would take it much further than just playing for Skirla? Uh I'll be honest. Uh, I wasn't too interested in it. I wasn't too bothered about rugby. I remember Danny Wilson asking me how much I want to play rugby and I think it was like 60%. Something like that. I want to play. Yep. Like I want to make it as a professional. Like I want too fussed about it. Yep. I was just enjoying playing it, playing it with my mates on a Sunday at Scala, Just enjoying it there. But then obviously I got chose. To, I was a bit gutted when I didn't get picked in the academy. But then it just. I got a job straight from school to be honest. Uh, but right. it makes you realise when you're seeing all your mates who you played with Scala, playing for academy, and then uh, like uh, you said earlier, I got chosen from that uh, Aussie high school team. Uh, it was just it was meant to be the city of all versus um, the the Aussies, but uh, obviously the, it got chosen. It got picked to a whole team instead, like the whole amateur teams, and obviously yeah. I got picked in it. And then uh, Jason Everton just told me after that game that he wanted to sign me. So yeah, I didn't yeah. actually watch that game. Um, did he score any tries? How do you think you went? What's your personal sort of reaction to your performance? Uh, they kicked it through, and I scored a full length try. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> As you do, make it sound like it's a normal every week occurrence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so how important was that sort of second chance to be a part of the academy setup? Because you said you was a bit gutted at first. When you got that second chance, were you over the moon? Was you like, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the second chance and, and try my best to get to the first team? Uh yeah, yeah. I think I just like had a good thing to myself and obviously I, I started committing a lot, obviously getting to training every day. I was obviously studying at Bishop Burton College as well at the time, yeah. So I was uh, doing that, but I think uh, I think it just pretty much changed my old man, my whole mindset, changed the way I was and stuff like that. But I think it changed the better for me, obviously not getting that academy, and I think it woke me up a bit. Yeah. So I think um, it just probably changed me for the better, to be honest. Hey, so honestly, like I said, I met you uh, when you was in your last year at City Hall Academy, and you was one of the best players, which led to you getting signed by FC. And I filmed you against London, I think. You must have scored a hat trick in that game. You absolutely smashed it. And so I had no idea that, you know, you said before that you was only um, 60% interested in, in carrying on your rugby career. You was working full time. I had no idea. This goes to show that there's talented players like yourself who may not really realize their own potential. So it was really a good thing that uh, City Hall came back and gave you that that second opportunity. Just going to go to um, some of the comments. So uh, this comment here says. Uh, uh, Bonsoir, Monsieurs. So I'm guessing that's one of our, one of our French viewers. Um, there's a good question here from Brent, who says, this is a good question for you, Connor. Do the young academy players have a plan B? Um, um, if not, 
don't cue. It doesn't didn't really finish this question, but do you, speaking to your sort of teammates, are they given like a plan B at the beginning? Like, are, they, are you guys encouraged to get jobs or education on the sides as you're training, or do you uh, just focus on rugby? Uh, yeah, that you stood when we was in academy, uh, we still sh- study at Bishop Burton, sorry, mm. and uh, that's where you can become a like do sport, B Tech sport, uh, construction, farming, all stuff like that. So it's uh, I think they do give you like a backup check just in case they don't make it, so they don't like just throw you under the bus, say like if they don't sign you. Ace, yeah, so, yeah. So I think Brent's has finished off his uh question here, so he's I think he's saying that. His son says that you need to talk, focus, and work better on the terms of line. Um, yeah, so you know, just piggybacking on what Connor said, um, most of the players are at college, aren't they? And they're given some sort of uh, sort of education system. Um, the current scholarship players at the moment are given uh, apprenticeships if they're at whole KR. I'm not sure if FC do something similar, but um, legally in this country, you have to stay in education until 18 anyway. So I'm assuming that FC have to keep the players involved in some form of education. Um, Nathan, do you want to come in with a question for Connor, mate? Um, so, like, looking back over, like, the last um, year or so, I know you said during, like, the first March lockdown, like, um, last year, you you kind of struggled a bit during your training. You didn't really do much, but obviously you had the restart and everything, uh, and you've had a new coach come in. Um, how have you found, like, especially over the last couple of months going back into a lockdown, how have you found... Um, your training and keeping on top of your skills and your improvement when you can't be on a rugby pitch? Uh, yeah, it's got a lot better, obviously. I think I, I might have needed that change, obviously, to like focus on getting everything better. Um, I, I know like you shouldn't need it, but sometimes you do, to obviously wake you up a bit and realise what you've actually got is like brilliant. Uh, but I think... Yeah, I've, I improved a lot and I've been uh, working a lot off, off the field and stuff like that to obviously get my fitness better so and my skill better. So I think it's uh, it woke me up a bit with obviously a new coach coming in wanting to impress. So, yeah. Nice. Just going to try and bring uh, Leon back in, but he's he's muted. Hopefully, there we are. He'll mute himself. Um, so, Leon, can you hear us, mate? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, so, uh, I'm going to try ask my question for the third time. Hopefully, it works, mate. If not, um, we'll have to get you back on another week when yeah. uh, you maybe have a, a better connection. Like I said, get yourself down to Connor's house. He's got the best connection in the whole, mate. So, <laughs> um, how can you see this image, mate? Is it showing up for you? Yeah, yeah, it's there. Ah, oh, brilliant. Yes, yeah, so talk us through um, the story behind this image. Uh, well, it's it's me and basically all of the lads from Westall because. Um, we either got picked for City of Hull or Castleford, so we're all in that one. Yeah, we're pretty, yeah, we're pretty much all in that one, all of us. Uh, it was just a quick get-together after the game before we had to go get changed and whatever. Brilliant. Let's go back to the first image of yours, which was this one. Can you see that, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. So what's the story behind this image? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's... The first match against France, it was the shirt presentation. Um, so yeah, everyone got everyone got the shirts, and we was all we was all pretty buzzing about it. To be fair, so. so obviously, looking back at that England game, um, I filmed that game, and it was a crazy game. It's top talent. To be fair, the French talent was top as well. Like the French guys who came across, yeah, massive yeah. skills. Uh, but look on the England side, you've got a lot of players who. Uh, Bailey's obviously gone across to Australia. We've got a lot of players who've been handed Super League contracts. Who would you say was the best player uh, for England over that two two game test series? Uh, I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty hard to say because obviously we was all we was all in the same boat. So uh, obviously everyone everyone was deserving of being there. Uh, but to be fair, probably. Probably like Archie Fletcher. Archie yeah. Fletcher is obviously he's one of one of my good mates. Um and he's he's it's a tough character, them, isn't he? Yeah, one of them players who will literally do anything. Mm. Uh, but yeah. He he trained hard. I mean, obviously all these behind the scenes sort of thing that you don't see. Um, the extras. He was yeah, he was trained hard and uh, 
doing everything that I needed to be to be there. So, nice. Nathan, do you want to come in with a question for Leon, mate? Uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, we'll just touch on like your England um, test series and everything. Uh, obviously, you came into rugby quite late, like we mentioned earlier as well. Um, so, if you were to go back to like when you started playing in like year eight now and go back to kids around that age now and you could give them any advice if they were wanting to like get into rugby and they just had like a burning passion like you got around that age to yeah. get to where you are now what would you what would you give to them i mean um to be honest the biggest the biggest thing for me was the advice i got from my coaches and i'll i'll take that literally um if they tell me to do something i i did it and uh, oh, it's obviously made me a better player because otherwise I wouldn't have I wouldn't have got the chance to play for England. So I I would say do absolutely everything you can. Hey, so it's got a comment here from uh, James Abbott, who's obviously uh, a legend of a coach in Hull. He's coached many players who come through the whole the whole systems, especially in East Hull. And he says, a uh, great uh, attitude, Connor. I remember the Aussie game really well. A certain Tom Dearden, who's now at Brisbane Broncos, I believe was playing in that game too. So Con obviously scored a full length try. But in terms of the skill, did you guys end up winning that game against the Aussies, Connor? <laughs> no, we got, uh, we got absolutely battered. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, because I filmed yeah. that game three times now. I've, I've filmed three times where the Aussies have come across the hole and played uh, the academy and like the amateur the amateur setup. And each time the Aussies have won. Um, what do you think sets the Aussies apart from the English lads? I think the... I think it's they're just a lot quicker than the actual than uh, than the English. Um, I think obviously the way they play the game compared to us is a lot faster. You're a lot fitter. Obviously over there, like rugby is probably the biggest sport over there. Whether well over here it's not. So I think that's got a massive impact on stuff. But I think the Australians are um, uh, like rugby, rugby, rugby. Well over here, some people yeah. are like having a mixture. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's actually come into fruition, but I know over in um, Australia, rather than putting people in age groups, obviously you, you played against people your own age, um, Connor, but rather than put, putting guys in age groups, apparently in Australia, they want to match people to size ability. Um, do you think that's a good idea or an idea that probably wouldn't really make much of an effect in terms of bringing players through? Yeah, I think it'd be good, obviously. Obviously, because you, you're playing people your own size, so you're obviously trying to... And you're probably getting stronger, improving a lot more. So I think obviously that's probably a really good uh, idea to take on. But yeah, uh, I think there's no way that would probably happen. Yeah, yeah, because I've I've seen it a hundred times where players really good at um, under 11s or under 12s because he's the biggest kid in year seven, the biggest kid in year eight, and when he gets to you know 16, uh, 16, 15, when it's scholarship time. He hasn't really built up that skill level because it's been too easy for him. It's been pushing people over sort of thing. So, you know, the Aussie idea of matching people by size ability, I think it would be a fantastic idea. But it's far too many uh, rugby politics to uh, to battle against yeah. for that to happen in England. Uh, Briggs, he's going to come up with a question for Leon now that he's back with a good connection. Yep. So I'm going to skip my second question because Sean and Nathan have kind of asked this one, Leon. So I'm going to go for the final one. Now you've made your England debut at youth level and after the pandemic, do you reckon you can push Bebe to get this Super League contract and make your professional debut? And then also, the World Cups this year, isn't it? For bad and it goes ahead. Do you reckon that's the dream for you, to play a World Cup for England? Yeah, I mean, of course it is. I mean, the first time <laughs> I played for England, uh, I always wanted to go back. It was just something that you know, it was it was special, and at the time I thought, oh, this it'll probably never happen again. Uh, but I didn't by by that time I didn't even know that I was gonna be playing for FC. So, you know, anything can happen, and I'll always I'll always be ready to to make my first team debut for FC and maybe England one. Hey, so Nathan, any final questions for um, Leon or Connor? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all spent on my questions. All spent, yeah. So I'm going to come in with a final question. All right, boys. So obviously, my side of the game is marketing. I'm going to market rugby league. Is what is what I've that's is what I've been driven to do since I started this platform. Started off with trying to market the grassroots things, and now we're starting to do things like your academy. Um, 
Robert Elston is, has recently left the Super League. I'll start with you, Connor. Connor, you're obviously sponsored by PBS, who are a great local company and obviously fantastic sponsors. But we want to obviously market the game to really, really big global worldwide brands. If you could be sponsored by any company and get free stuff for the rest of your career, Connor, which company would you be sponsored by? And you can't say Timmy Mallets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's got it's got to be Nike, can't it? Uh, yep. It's got to be uh, probably probably the best, probably one of the best com- probably is the best company out there for like clothing, boots, trainers, yeah, stuff like that. But I think that's probably the uh, company that I'd probably choose out of any, anyone and want to be sponsored by. See, I'm not keen on Nike. I don't really like the Nike tick. I feel like it's such a basic logo. I like, I'm yeah. an Adidas man myself. Um, so I'm, I, most of the things I have are Adidas or, or Under Armour, but I just feel like a tick. There's too much of a basic uh, logo for me, but even a Nike or Adidas, aren't you? Yeah. Um, same question to you, Leon. If you could be sponsored by anyone and get free stuff for the rest of your life, he's obviously going to say Hull of Sea because he sits around in his full kit <laughs> every single uh, day. I mean... <laughs> I don't, I don't like, I don't like to copy off people, but I have to agree with Connor. It's got to be Nike. Oh my lord! <laughs> yeah, it's got to be. Why is, why is that? Got to be. What about you, Nathan and Briggs? Are you guys Nike lads as well? I did ask lads. Yeah, I had to break it to show, but I'd, I'd probably go with Nike as well if I had the Terrible. choice. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Briggsy? Well, so what we're saying here, you three are on Nike, yeah. But I'm gonna break it here and go Adidas. Yeah, I, I did that all the way. It's a much better logo. Right then, lads, so we've been about an hour. Um, been a fantastic first podcast. A couple of technical glitches, but, you know, it was our first one. I remember the first ever game I feel the grassroots would be. It was terrible. You know, you, so you, you sort of learn, you learn from your mistakes. Uh, but I think for a first goal, we've done a really good job. So first, I want to thank our guests for coming on, uh, Leon Stewart and Connor Wynn from Hollisee. Two really talented youngsters who are going to have a fantastic career. Um, so look out for these guys in the future. They're going to smash it. And also thank you to my co-presenters, uh, Nathan Taylor and Harry Briggsy. Uh, cheers, guys. And hopefully have you on for uh, future podcasts as, as the year goes on. All right. Cheers, boys. Yes, thank you. Cheers, guys.